So on behalf of the um, uh, module working group, I'm uh, very pleased to be able to present the ESO guidelines on blood pressure management in acute ischemic stroke and intracerebral hemorrhage. These are my disclosures. I have no financial disclosures, but I have been involved in several of the trials which have been included in the evidence for the guidelines. Uh, I am presenting the guidelines on behalf of the module working group. Uh, it's been a great pleasure working with these people and we hope that uh, our guidelines are well accepted. First, why are we interested in blood pressure in acute stroke? Well, up to 80% of our patients have high blood pressures when they are admitted to the ED. Blood pressure falls quite rapidly within the first couple of hours, and that is the natural course of blood pressure in acute stroke. And in most patients, it's normalized within one to two weeks. We do know that patients with very high blood pressure and very low blood pressure have a higher risk of poor outcome. And this is seen in uh, a lot of different populations around the world. But what should we do about blood pressure? So even though uh, we mainly care for our patients in hospital, uh, the uh, treatment chain of acute stroke starts in the pre-hospital setting. So our first PICO question is in patients with suspected acute stroke, does pre-hospital blood pressure lowering with any vasodepressor drug compared to no drug improve outcome? And our recommendation for this PICO is in patients with suspected stroke, we suggest against routine blood pressure lowering in the pre-hospital setting. We further have an expert consensus statement regarding this PICO, and mainly based on the right to trial, our expert consensus statement is, due to the potential harm in patients with intracerebral hemorrhage, pre-hospital treatment with glycerol trinitrate should be avoided. We are moving then from the pre-hospital setting and into the in-hospital setting. And our second PICO is in hospitalized patients with acute ischemic stroke, not treated with brief perfusion therapies, intravenous thrombolysis or mechanical thrombectomy, does blood pressure lowering with any vasodepressor drug compared to no drug improve outcome? Our recommendation here is in hospitalized patients with acute ischemic stroke and blood pressure under 220 over 110 millimeters of mercury, not treated with intravenous thrombolysis or mechanical thrombectomy, we suggest against the routine use of blood pressure lowering agents, at least in the first 24 hours following symptom onset, unless this is necessary for a specific comorbid condition. We further have an expert consensus statement regarding this PICO, which is in patients with acute ischemic stroke not treated with intratrenous thrombolysis or mechanical thrombectomy and blood pressure over 220, over 120 millimeters of mercury, careful blood pressure reduction, less than 15% systolic blood pressure reduction in 24 hours is reasonable and likely to be safe no specific blood pressure lowering agent can be recommended. So moving on from the patients who are not treated with reperfusion therapies onto PICO-3, which is in, patient, in hospitalized patients with acute ischemic stroke undergoing treatment with intravenous thrombolysis with or without mechanical thrombectomy, does blood pressure lowering therapies compared to control improve outcome. Our first recommendation uh, for patients uh, undergoing treatment with intravenous thrombolysis with or without mechanical thrombectomy is that we should suggest maintaining blood pressure under 185 over 110 millimeters of mercury before the bolus and below 180 over 105 after the bolus and for 24 hours after the alteplase infusion. No specific blood pressure lowering agent can be recommended. Further, our second recommendation is in patients with acute ischemic stroke undergoing treatment with intravenous thrombolysis with or without mechanical thrombectomy. We suggest against lowering systolic blood, 
pressure to a target of 130 to 140 compared to under 180 during the first 72 hours following symptom onset. So moving further, and we will now have the fourth PICO question, which is in patients with acute ischemic stroke caused by large vessel occlusion undergoing mechanical thrombectomy with or without intravenous thrombolysis, does blood pressure lowering with any vasodepressor drug compared to no drug improve outcome? We have three re recommendations here. The first being in patients with acute ischemic stroke due to large vessel occlusion undergoing mechanical thrombectomy with or without intravenous thrombolysis, we suggest keeping blood pressure below 180 over 105 during and 24 hours after mechanical thrombectomy. No specific blood pressure lowering agent can be recommended. Our second recommendation is in patients with acute ischemic stroke due to large ves vessel occlusion, we suggest against actively reducing systolic blood pressure under 130 millimeters of mercury during the first 24 hours following a successful mechanical thrombectomy. Our third recommendation here is in patients with acute ischemic stroke due to large vessel occlusion undergoing treatment with mechanical thrombectomy with or without uh, intravenous thrombolysis, systolic blood pressure drops should be avoided. So we are now moving on to the fifth PICO question, and that is in patients with acute ischemic stroke not treated with reperfusion therapies and with clinical deterioration, does induced hypertension by any vasopressor drug compared to no drug improve outcome? And our recommendation here is in patients with acute ischemic stroke not treated with reperfusion therapies who experience clinical deterioration, we suggest against the routine use of vasopressor drugs to increase blood pressure. We further have a very long expert consensus statement, which is in patients with acute ischemic stroke, not treated with reperfusion therapies and with clinical deterioration where a hemodynamic mechanism is suspected or shown to be right, directly responsible for the deterioration, we suggest first stopping existing blood pressure lowering therapy, administering intravenous fluids, and introducing non-pharmacological procedures to raise blood pressure, for example, raising the legs. Once this is done, you can carefully consider the use of vasopressor agents to increase blood pressure with close monitoring of blood pressure values. Our sixth PICO question is in patients with acute ischemic stroke, does continuing versus temporarily stopping previous oral blood pressure lowering therapy improve outcome? Here, we did not find enough evidence to make a formal recommendation, but we have an expert consensus statement, which is in patients with acute ischemic stroke, we suggest stopping previous blood pressure lowering therapy in patients with dysphagia until swallowing is restored or a nasogastric tube is in place. This is mainly based on our meta-analysis where we included the data from the COSAX trial and the ENOS trial which showed a, a, an increased risk of a mortality with continuing a previous antihypertensive drug in patients with uh, acute ischemic stroke. Further, we move on to PICO7. We will now leave acute ischemic stroke behind and move on to intracerebral hemorrhage. And PICO7 is in patients with acute intracerebral hemorrhage, does intensive blood pressure lowering with any vasodepressor drug compared to control improve outcome? We have two recommendations here. The first is in patients with acute uh, intracerebral hemorrhage, there is a continued uncertainty over benefits and risks of intensive blood pressure lowering on functional outcome. Our second recommendation is in patients with hyperacute, meaning less than six hours from symptom onset, 
uh, intracerebral hemorrhage, we suggest lowering blood pressure to below 140 and to keep it above 110 to reduce hematoma expansion. We also here have two expert consensus statements. The first being in patients with acute intracerebral hemorrhage, we suggest initiating antihypertensive treatment as early as possible, and ideally within two hours of symptom onset. The decrease in of systolic blood pressure should not exceed 90 millimeters of mercury from baseline values. Our second expert consensus statement is in patients with acute intracerebral hemorrhage, hemorrhage we suggest lowering blood pressure according to the recommended levels beyond six hours after onset of treatment for at least 24 hours and up to 72 hours to uh, reduce hematoma expansion. So I will take you through the supporting information on the basis we made our recommendation. So first, this is the meta-analysis of blood pressure lowering with any vasodepressor drug compared with control and intracerebral hemorrhage on good functional outcome. We included 10 trials uh, totaling over 5,700 patients. And in this analysis, we found no effect of blood pressure lowering on functional outcome. Further, we also did uh, an analysis looking at blood pressure lowering with any, vas any vasodepressor drug compared with control in intracerebral hemorrhage on hematoma expansion. And we did uh, uh, an analysis according to uh, time from symptom onset to treatment. In the subgroup of patients uh, that were included within six hours, uh, we had included three trials, the ATAC-2 trial, INTERACT-1 and INTERACT-2 trial. And within the first six hours of symptom onset, we saw a significant effect uh, on reducing hematoma expansion uh, with blood pressure lowering. There, there was no significant effect when looking at trials that recruited patients up to 24 hours. So our final PICO question is in patients with acute intracerebral hemorrhage, does continuing versus temporarily stopping previous oral antihypertensive therapy improve outcome? Our recommendation also here, it was difficult to, based on the evidence to make a, a, a proper uh, recommendation, but we do have an expert consensus statement. And this is in patients with acute intracerebral hemorrhage who need blood pressure lowering therapy to maintain blood pressure within the recommended range and do not have swallowing problems, we suggest continuation of previous oral antihypertensive agents. So finally, to make some conclusions, hands-off approach in patients with acute ischemic stroke ineligible for reperfusion treatment unless blood pressure is very high. In the setting of intravenous thrombolysis, we suggest blood pressure under 185 and over 110 before and under 180 over 105 during and after treatment. For mechanical thrombectomy, I think the aim is sustained blood pressure control. It's not the number, it's the tumbler. Consider induced hypertension in very selected patients. Blood pressure lowering in ICH with a target of uh, 140 millimeters of uh, mercury as early as possible after symptom onset. And for future perspective, future research should focus on a more individualized treatment approach and should also include more perfusion imaging. Thank you very much.